and welcome to another episode of Tribunal of the Grid, where we talk about all things Power Rangers, including the actors that play them. My name is Brandon. I am Lena. And I'm Will. And today, we will be talking about just a few little things, just a few little things, you know, where we'll try not to keep you for too long, you know, you know. I mean, I'm lying, but, you know, we ain't gonna, we ain't, we ain't gonna keep you for like two or three hours, we ain't gonna do that. But we, you know, we gonna keep you for a little bit, you know what I'm saying? We just, just kick back, relax, and enjoy your time with us, and we really appreciate it. Um, so we're gonna be covering some stuff, um, one of our one of our people will he you know you you travel to to the piece of con you know was it ranger con right that was ranger it con? was uh go go ranger station yes go go ranger station there we go he went to go go ranger station so he's going to be talking about that today um we're going to be also talking about some expectations or things that we would like to see for power month and also we will be doing a little quick little not really quick, but, you know, a little piece of discussion, a little, you know, piece of little, you know, talk, talk about, you know, for, um, for the movie Sailor Moon Eternal, which, you know, includes veteran ranger Johnny Yon Bosch, who voices the role of Artemis, the kitty, the little white kitty cat, and uh, also Christina V., who is also the Black Hyperforce Ranger in Power Rangers Hyperforce, she plays Sailor Mars. So, without further ado, Will, what, what, what's the tea? What happened at Go Go, Ring, uh, Go, Go Ranger Station? Yes, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I can't get a name for this thing. What happened? What's tea? What did you, what did you experience? Well, the... Oh God, the... It, it was a good experience, but the the travel there like leading up to it and the the travel back was something else um oh, no, real quick happened? um <laughs> all right so i did um i did a car rental because it's it's pretty far out it's not um it's not at the place that we usually have our conventions at which is um the convention center which is downtown uh philadelphia it was uh-huh. um it was the same place that uh, they had another con a few years ago uh, when I met Johnny and Amy Jo. Uh, it's kind of like the, it's, it's kind of isolated. Um, so it would have taken forever if I didn't drive. So I rented a car um, since, uh, I guess since things are getting back to normal, they, they hiked up the prices. So that was <laughs> that was a uh, that was something to to figure out how to actually pay for it. But they also needed um, you have to pay with uh, if you're paying with like a debit card, you have to um, have a utility bill. And of course, when I got there, uh, I downloaded the bill into my phone, but I couldn't actually bring it up for some reason. Okay. So I was scrambling there. I went across the street to, uh, thank God my carrier was across the street. So I went over there, but they didn't have a printer. Oh God. So yeah. So then I, I don't know. I don't know. So oh my God. Um, that sounds like a hot mess. <laughs> <laughs> and it was literally hot too. Um, me and my oh, friend were out no. in the sun oh. for, uh, initially. Um, and they let us come in into the air conditioning. And then um, we went over to uh, the printer list uh, phone store. And um, so I came back over. Thank God, somehow I was able to open the Ad- Adobe app and then it came up. So that worked out. So then we went back to uh, my place to get like all the stuff we were going to bring with us. How come I couldn't get the car to start? <laughs> what? Wait, what? Repeat that. What? Repeat that one more time. I couldn't get the car to start. How? I, what? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Like I know I haven't driven a car in like two years, but I still remember how to start it. Obviously, because I just drove it back to my house. Oh. But I, oh my god, I was hitting the brake and turning the key, and it wouldn't move. My brother um, came back home and I'm telling him because I'm like double parked in front of the house. I'm telling him what happened. Um, Thankfully, he was able to get it started. So, 
Whew, okay, so fine. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of, it was weird, the stuff I was running into on the way there. But um, the actual con, when we got there, um, it was it was a, a small, intimate con. It reminded me a lot of uh, Morphicon 2. It was, it was uh, pretty- okay. Yeah, and they didn't they didn't have a ton of guests, so um I was able to meet um well this isn't the first time I met them, but um Justin Nemo who we interviewed, I actually got to meet him in person this time. Did he, he remember you? He remembered, yeah. What? <laughs> um I mean I guess he didn't do too many interviews last year. I guess he will remember how them. Would, so how mm-hmm. did you like approach him? Um, I, when I walked up, I, um, I said, hello, um, I showed him the card that I had printed out for us. And, um, when he saw the name, it's like, oh yeah, I remember you. And then we just had a conversation from there. Nice. Um, yeah, I met, um, well, I met for the second time, uh, Tracy Lynn Cruz, Ashley, the Yellow Ranger, and, uh, saw when Ward TJ, the yeah. it was cool because I met them um at Morphicon 2 way back in the day and I had like pictures of that so that was nice to recreate one of them with um with Selwyn and um interestingly enough uh that weird thing that happened to Tracy at Morphicon 2 we actually had a conversation about it because she was the oh, first wow. person. Yeah, she was. I was the first person that she met that actually was in the room and actually remembered it. There was a really weird situation that happened at Morphicon too, where this guy asked a really weird question, and it like scared her off for a couple of years. So um, she yes. had never really, yeah, she had never really talked about that before, and um, I forgot how it came. I forgot how it came up, but. Um, she said I was the first person that actually like, you know, remembered that situation. It was like the first time she actually talked about it. It was, it was cool. It was, she was so nice. Um, she, she took top, she took her time with everybody. So me and my friend were waiting for a little while, but she um, came over to us really quick and told us, um, I'm sorry, this is taking so long, but I want to just, you know, make sure that I'm giving everybody the same type of respect so I'm going to take just as long with you and then she ended up doing just that so that was really cool and that's um, sweet. That's really yeah cool her. yeah and I'm um I met Carla Perez who uh was Rita and um Kyle Higgins it was so cool I met Kyle Higgins who uh nice. did the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers comics uh, from what, 2016, 2018? I got mm-hmm. to thank him. Shadow Dread. Yeah, I got to thank him for that. And he was telling me that um, there were actually a, um, a couple of plans that they had with uh, Saban that they were going to, they were exciting. I, I remember hearing it in an interview he did before, something along the lines of adapting Shattered Grid into some sort of of a show or something but it didn't happen because Hasbro uh, got it so and um oh my god and I got to play um Heroes Heroes of the Grid I think that's yes yeah and um that was that was fun um it was I think it was about about six of us and um that that was pretty fun I, I I definitely felt like I need more ranger friends like in my real life to play it if I ever got it. Mm, um, but, okay. um, but the way that the guys were um, explaining it, like really anybody can play it. You just have to know the rules of the game. You don't necessarily have to know, you know, the history of Power Rangers because it gives you pretty clear instructions, but it was, it was fun. And I actually, uh, I won a raffle for playing the game. I won a raffle and I got the Mega Gold or Deluxe Sphere. Nice. For, okay. For the game. But it was um all in all it was fun. Um bunch of cosplayers there. Um I got to talk to Lady J. Um she was the cosplayer who who um was in charge of the con. She was uh Scorpina. 
and it was a lot of cool cosplayers there. It was, it was, a, it was a fun time. So did so you didn't cosplay? Is that what you're I, saying? No, and I had <laughs> I was going to do another low key cosplay. I have bought a green shirt and I have a Green Ranger helmet, and I was just going. And I have green chucks. I was going to do that, but then. After all the stuff we went through, I didn't feel like it. My best friend, he had um, he had a, a turtles costume, so it would have been perfect for you know the turtle Power Rangers uh, mm-hmm. uh, crossover. But we both just didn't feel like doing it. I know, I know, mm-hmm. I know. <laughs> next time, I mean, next you- time. You you missed the perfect chance, man. You missed the chance, I man. I know, I know. Uh, but it's all good. But at least you had a good time. It sounds like yeah. at least it, it did turn out good in the end. Yeah, yeah. And I'm I'm definitely looking forward because I oh my god, I haven't been to a convention since 2019. So it's I miss them a lot. So I'm looking forward to us being able to attend more of them and uh, Morphicon next summer, right? Yes. Well, yes. That's what we're. That's what they're planning. Fingers freaking crossed. Yes. I'm, I'm sick of this stuff going on. Oh and we my are, gosh! We yes. all have to meet each other finally because I haven't met these two yet. Yes, but you haven't. Is sad. Is that crazy? <laughs> we have a whole. You have lot not. Of- like yeah, I've <laughs> the weirdest thing is like I've known Will for like ever, like yeah. almost like how it's almost like ten almost years. Almost ten. I can't wow. believe it. I think next I'm year like, will be ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we all need to do something special for your ten year anniversary. <laughs> well, right. we'll meet finally. We'll we'll finally, meet. finally. It's like Jesus Christ, we never met each other. Well, let's hope. <laughs> Like let's hope, right? Oh, like we God. don't even know. Yes, at this point. Try to keep positive thoughts on. Hope, oh. right? Like I don't want to sound like the Debbie Downer. Really, I don't. <laughs> it's just I guess because being in this shit has really given me a wake up call, and it really goes to show you that that five year plan, that ten year plan you had out the freaking <laughs> right. <window. laughs> Seriously, like you know? shit changes in a so, heartbeat, and you gotta adjust with the change, right? So. Yeah. So the next time I'm in an interview and they ask me what my five-year plan is, my five-year plan is to not try to be in a pandemic yeah. again. <laughs> okay. You know, don't, no. That's what I, no. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, this is good though. It sounds like you really had a yeah. great time. I wish you could have gone to a convention. That would have been so much it fun. It would have been a lot of fun. Like, because it, it sounds like it was actually a really cool experience. Like, even, like, because I like intimate settings where it's like, okay, um, you have, like, the chance to, like, sit down and talk and have a good time yeah. versus, mm-hmm. like, you're, like, shoulder to shoulder. You know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. Like, everybody's yeah. crowding you. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. everybody feels like a can of sardines in one place. It's just like, oh, my God, right. this is terrible. And, um, and Morphicon, yeah. Morphicon grew to... Uh, more similar to bigger cons, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like, really, really big. yeah. I mean, like, because really where they, where it was at the Pasadena Convention Center, like we were literally packed like sardines. Like it was just yeah, like, yeah, that, yeah. yeah. Oh my god, we kept Ren and I kept like having a meeting spot where we're like, okay, we can lost, <laughs> meet up here. We can lost, meet up here. Meet, meet here, because it was just, it was, just, it was <laughs> terrible. It was, it was terrible, Miss Weiss. <laughs> Like <laughs> and, the other thing, and then the other thing is too was crazy. It's like we couldn't even use the internet because everyone was on the everyone internet. Everyone was on the internet. Like, uh, wait, so we sense. couldn't even call each other on um, through uh WhatsApp because everybody was on the internet. Everybody's on the internet. So it's just like it's it's oh it was a mess. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, I have a really important question for you. Did mm-hmm. you get to chance to meet any of our actual listeners? Oh my god, yes. There were a few really? people that recognized, yes. Ah! One of, yes, one of the guys that um, was hosting the uh, the Heroes of the Grid game, I handed them um, our card, and, and he was like, oh, I know you. And then that what? happened a couple of times. I was so surprised. Nice. Right? <laughs> Are you freaking out? Oh, my God. That I is was, amazing. Yes, I was shocked. That's so cool. Oh my god. That is so oh effing god. cool. Like that that's I'm dope. Having, 
I'm having a moment. Like that is so freaking cool. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's something I would have led with first, Will. <laughs> I'm not right. <laughs> <laughs> like people know us. <laughs> what? I'm 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 having a moment. I'm I'm freaking out. Like that is so freaking cool. Oh wow, that's actually really cool. And that's exciting. That's exciting. That is very that's dope. Exciting. I think that's probably the best part of your whole story. <laughs> Forget everything yeah, I was, else. I was really like networking. That was like so out of my comfort zone because I'm so uh, shy. Of it. Um, proud of you. It worked out. Proud Good of you. you. Look at you. <laughs> Look at you. Proud of you. Look at that. Oh my God. And do you think when Will first started podcasting with us, he barely spoke. If you all ever go back and listen to our older episodes, it was just me and Brennan. It might as well have been the me and Brennan show. <laughs> <laughs> and look and look at him networking and talking to people. Look at you. <laughs> right? <laughs> proud of it. We love it. Grow. Oh, that's amazing. We love look it. That. Oh, that is so freaking cool. I can't believe it. People actually, did you get a picture with them? No. <laughs> <laughs> that's real got, that's real i mainly like um they were just you know regular um con goers no i know i know you know and they and it's not like i'm a celebrity or anything so they didn't actually take a picture with me no, <laughs> so i just took pictures with um like the cosplayers right you know what i meant was on. like i think for me it would have been cool if i was like if i met someone that actually listened to us for me, I would want to take a picture with them, not the other. I can way. understand. Not I can understand. Like, I can understand. Yeah, you. not because like uh, we know we're For gratitude. Yes, like yeah, not because like I we think that we're celebrities. No, not at all. Mm. You kidding? But just mm -hmm. to like, that's cool. Like to be able to have someone be like, "Yo, we recognize you. We recognize that logo. Like we know mm -hmm. who you all are. Like that is effing cool." Yeah, so unreal. Mind blowing. That's like that's next level. That's next level. That's that's oh, dope. That's dope. That's oh, that's it's everything. It's everything. Like it's so nice to know that we work really hard to put out a show that's entertaining, that's obviously factual, along with just you know being our silly sub to indulge in something that we all enjoy and have people mm -hmm. love that enjoy that and you know it just and, and be us for us to be recognized for it too like it's everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah for sure wow well <sighs> that's amazing that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but, guys, I'm having a whole moment. Having a moment, you're just having a moment, having a moment on on the show. But um, <laughs> but okay. So we'll had an excellent time. Um, now speaking of good times, we have pretty much August is going to be the birth of the the the, uh, the birth month of Power Rangers, as we know, August twenty eighth was it was the day that power mighty Morphin power rangers was conceived and had, <laughs> and was birthed to the world um back in 1993 you know now we have national power rangers month and hasbro is basically creating what's called power month where they basically are going to be releasing power rangers merch each week um also they want to get up to the 100th Lightning Collection toy. Um, and I believe they said that they're on like 90 something or like close to Thank 90 already. That. Yeah. Thank you for that. I was wondering. Wow. Yeah. They're, they're almost there. So all during the week, uh, all, every week in August, they will be releasing new toys up until they get to the 100th one, um, which, you know, this is pretty cool. Also, during the um, during Fan First Friday, they also had a silhouette of a toy that, to me, looks very much like the Ninja Rangers from oh, Mighty right, Morphin right, Power right, Rangers. Right, 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 right. I remember seeing that. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, what do you guys think? Like, what 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 kind of merchandise? What kind of toys 
do you think that they're going to, you know, release or, or what do you think they're going to do for Power Month? Well, definitely the Ninja Ranger seems like the most obvious thing because uh, you just jogged my memory on that one. Um, right, right. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if it'll <laughs> just, <laughs> just be Tommy or if it'll be oh more. god <laughs> <laughs> or maybe like i mean that it, it makes sense that it would be um uh, but I, I guess that would that would open up the floodgates to them releasing the other ones um I, hopefully jen finally yes um, yes uh just and and hopefully you know these figures will look like the actors because it's been as we've talked about many times, it's been hit or miss. Yeah, so, um, that's yeah. true. I mean, well, as far as like the Ninja Rangers, like they're if they do if they're smart, they would just do the TV show Ninja Rangers where their <laughs> where their uh, eyes are not seen. <laughs> I mean, for that would help them with not having to worry about likeness. But hello, you know, those TV ones, they you know what they look like. <laughs> like the black and the white ones. <laughs> so well, they probably listen. should go with the movie versions. <laughs> you know what though? Even if they go with the TV show one, it it'll actually be very cost effective because if you think about it, all they got to do is just change the um the logos on the chest mm-hmm. for the guys. And the, the, the body, the guys have the same body type. The girls have the same body type. It, it'd be a shoe in. Mm-hmm. It'd be easy. Mm-hmm. It'd be easy. So I mean, I think honestly, I think that'd be like their best bet. Like if they did that, but I mean, you know, I mean, it's money. It's money. Like, you know, they're, they're not going to be like, oh uh, yeah, we're going to try to get the lightness right on these mugs. I mean, because if they did, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have Cassie looking like Miss Fairweather. So, I mean, like they're, they're not trying to get lightness right. Uh, <laughs> so I'm just like, I think they might do TV show. If they, if they do the Ninja Rangers, they're going to do TV show Ninja Rangers. Like they have to, they have to. Um, Lena, what do you think? My what 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 kind of things do you think they're gonna do for Power Month? I don't I don't even know to be honest. I don't even know what to expect anymore. I mean, mm-hmm. aside from the fact that we know we're gonna keep getting toys. Oh yeah. I <laughs> I would love to see. Wait, like what is power? Like what does Power Ranger Month include? Like um, like does it include like series, or does it just a toy and merch? Um, well, f- according to them, it's just, well, from my understanding, it's just going to be merch. Um, but I mean, mm-hmm. it could be anything at this point because I mean, eh. you know, would be fun adult size costume that are very realistic to Ooh. go with the helmets. Right. <laughs> right. I think that would be fun. I'm sorry. I, for you listeners, I had no idea what power month was. So I'm just like, you know what? Let me ask a bunch of questions. But yeah, I think that would be really cool. Like a Delta size costume to go with the helmet, um, even with the morphers. And maybe we yeah. get Morphin morphers, not the mighty Morphin morphers. I um, want the turbo morpher finally. Right? Or like a TV accurate morph- one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what else? Like, even, you know what would be also really cool? Like a clothing line for, I, I can't remember mm. what the term is. But it's basically like you're cosplaying, but you're not cosplay. So it looks like regular clothes. But if anyone knows, they know if that makes any sense. I came up with the yeah. ah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yes. I think okay. TikTok and someone was like, oh, um, you know, yeah. So anyhow, that would be really cool to have a whole clothing line that is like essentially Power Rangers inspired. Kind of like, like, mm-hmm. like the have reason- like kind of like the Jason, uh, the Jason half shirt plaid half shirt <laughs> yeah like, right exactly like something like that i think that'll be well not even jason forget jason how about like chance or javier like with the half shirt situation yeah um, oh okay like the plaid like the plaid yeah. little outfit and all of that right? and the like with the, uh, dino music fury. shirt oh my god the dino fury cast outfit that would be dope i i love amelia's outfits i love all their outfits i think that would be cool like i think i mean no, look high key. Like I would love a green mesh shirt that Tommy wore in *The Green Ranger*. <laughs> I, I would, would personally love that. Of course you would. Yeah, of course you would. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, okay. I would love I, that green mesh shirt. <laughs> you know what's funny? Okay, 
if you all don't follow Brenda on his personal Instagram, you should. He did an interview recently. And when you said that, all I could think of, how do I, um, how do, well, the question was, how do you stay young <laughs> or something like that? And your, and your answer was, I stay out of people's business or something along those lines. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and I cry laugh. So, <laughs> because we all know Brendan does not stay out of people's business, okay? Same. Listen, listen. When it comes to when it comes to stuff like this, when it comes to Power Ranger stuff and stuff like that, oh, I have to have all the tea. I mean, I was once a reporter, so it's like oh. when it comes to certain things, I'm like, yeah, I ha- I I I I am a very good investigative journalist. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to just being all up in people's business on the daily, like just kind of like, oh, I, I want to know what's going on, like in these per- in like in certain people's personal business. Like sometimes I'm just like, no, like well, mind your business, like well, no. When you're talking about that, yeah. all I can picture you like hoeing yourself out, being like, mm-hmm, who am I going to research today? <laughs> Literally, that was my job. <laughs> At one point in my life, that was my job. <laughs> That's exactly um, what I'm picturing. When, I, when you said that show, I'm like, I can see Brandon in it. And just sitting there being like, hmm, whose business should I get into today? Who should I talk? Who should I look into? Who should, who should I talk to today? Who, who business should I, should I get into? No, but um, it's funny. Like it really is. Like that that interview was actually a lot of fun. Um, and just to, just to, for to clarify what Lena was saying, I did an interview um, with Entertainment Network Live, um, and basically it was a cute little interview. They just kind of you know asked me a couple questions. Um, about you know me as an actor and things of that nature. So if you want to check it out, uh, you most certainly can. It's actually on my own personal page, which is in our link, linktr.ee forward slash tribunal the grid. My link to my profile will be there. It is the very first one. As soon as you go to my profile, <laughs> it is the very first one. Uh, and you can read my responses to each answer to the questions, you know, my, well, my, my responses to each question. There we go. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, it was a fun interview. It really was. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, but just to get back on track, as far as the power month for me, I think I'm on the same line with all of you. Um, especially you, Lena, I really, I really would like some kind of like, if they were to do kind of like a clothing line or introduce something like that, um, I think that would be really, really freaking cool. Um, like, especially if they were to do things that were very similar to what they wore on the TV show. Um, in, in any right. season. You oh. know, that would be really freaking cool. Oh, so cute. Um, because a lot, of the, the, a lot of those clothes and stuff are making a comeback. Like, a mm. lot of them are. Like, the fashion from the 90s are coming right back. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if all of a sudden we just start walking around in Jamaican colored stuff like Zach was. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, we love to see it. Um, you know, so that would be actually really, really, really cool. Um, ooh. Oh, that's cute. What? <laughs> what is this? Wow. Okay, so sidebar. So Will just sent us a picture of Chance, um, Javi, the Black Ranger in Dino Fury. Uh, Apparently on his page, he just was, I guess, cleaning out his garage and he found the Lightspeed Rescue Morpher. I wonder if it works. I wonder if it still works. Like that is so adorable. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Oh, that's so cool. So uh, apparently the rangers actually were little rangers. He <laughs> was a little light speed ranger. Oh my God, that's so cute. But anyway. Well, that, uh, <laughs> also, that also dates us too. Oh my God, stop it. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> we are not doing that. I, I refuse. <laughs> I do not want to say how old I was while watching <laughs> light speed rescue. Oh my god! I, it was <laughs> after the, after that season. I thought that I was too old for Power Rangers. It's, it's, it's kind of oh, I definitely did not. I thought after Wild Force. No, actually, I didn't think I was too old. I think it was because Lightspeed Rescue kept repeating on my television, like I've told you all many, 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 many times. 
<laughs> oh no. Oh my god. Jesus. No, but like I actually like I actually started feeling like I was too old for it during Wild Force myself, to be honest. Um, because Wild Force, it just felt like they were really trying to pander to a younger audience, even though some of the themes were very, very adult. Um, right, like showing that's blood. So weird. Right. They were showing blood. Master like Ord being Master a Ord. proud murderer. <laughs> right. And then getting killed in the end. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, they were really doing some some crazy stuff. You know but yeah, it, it just felt so young and so kiddish. You know what it sounds like to me? They were having an identity crisis. Yeah. 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 That's exactly what it sounded like, Lena, to be you honest. Know. Yeah. Yeah. They could figure out if they wanted an older audience or a younger audience or or what. It was just kind of like, oh, we just want somebody watching. It's almost like they're trying way too hard and having an identity crisis while they're at it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes perfect sense because, like, it really did feel like it just felt young it like it's so kitty at times because it was always like the never give up shit and just like never give up never give up ah, ah, ah. you know i'm just like oh my god people stop like taylor was the only one who actually made sense um like she was the <laughs> only one like she was the only one who was like i'm the only one who have actually have sense in this show like everybody else is just oh, like stop. That's the reason why she was the leader. Well, right. I, I don't care. I still say she was the leader. I mean, I know they, they nominated Cole as the official leader, but no, Taylor was the leader. She was a leader. I, I mean, also, and I also feel like in a weird sense, they were also being a little sexist because yes. they were like, yeah, no, no. Cole was a leader because he's a man and he's a Red yes. Ranger. What? Absolutely. Like she's been the leader of that team until he came along. And then like he was he was terrible. Like he was terrible, <laughs> Your Honor. Like the way he was like, orcs don't have hearts. Duh. Like right. she was trying <laughs> to tell you that the whole time. Like you can't reason with them hoes. And he's sitting here like, right. no, they're, they're, they're life forms. So that means they, they, they can be reasoned with because they have hearts. No, you idiot. Oh my God. No, he took like what, like three whole, like, I don't even know. Like he took like half a season to figure that out. I mean, he he was a little bit slower because he wasn't, you know, raised. Don't care. Stop making. No, I'm sorry. You That's still, no, no. No. I I agree with Lena. Like, nah, (laughs) nah, no. Like you you are ineffective as a leader if you do that. Like you're putting the team in danger. (laughs) And also, well, not only just that, though, too, but like he was lit, he grew up in the forest, quote unquote, right? Mm-hmm. Let's just say, shouldn't he have discovered that way beforehand? Like, shouldn't he not know that, you know, the whole like circle of life and how shit works? But beyond that, he was already listening to some hearts way before these orbs came along. Mm-hmm. Well, wouldn't it be kind of um, Princess Shayla's fault for even putting him in charge? Yes. Oh, it was her fault. It was her fault too. Like she was definitely aiding in in I'm, in um male patriarchy. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> and Princess Absolutely. Sheila needed no, she needs to be sidebar. She was no, she was too. Oh much. my god. And her, I, oh my god. Scene? Girl bye. From for <laughs> me, it's yeah. the revealing that she can fight at the end of the season after she's been kidnapped. Like oh my times. god. Yeah, that you can fight. You can fight. <laughs> like, girl, and um, she's fighting proud in this little white gown. And I'm like, you done been kidnapped like ten times, and now all of a sudden you can fight, girl. If you don't sit your behind down right. somewhere, you know what it is because she's definitely um on the whole like, you know. I'm the the damsel in distress. Like guys must save me. Mm-hmm. Merrick must save me. Cole, you must save me. All the boys, please save me. Oh my gosh, even Alyssa, because even Alyssa saved her at one point when she got thrown in that dog on oh tire. I don't oh even think God. she meant for Alyssa to save her. It just I happened to be that, that. way. <laughs> wow. I mean, this helper got kidnapped in a tire. So how do you <laughs> how do you get kidnapped in a tire? <laughs> <laughs> And then we find out she knows how to fight. Like, girl, <laughs> if you don't sit your behind down somewhere, like, oh my god, ah, oh, ah. Oh. No, 
She's actually the reason why I cannot watch Wild Force ever again. I just, I, I don't know why I used to love her because I thought she was so pretty. I think it's mostly because I thought she was pretty. But then as an adult, I'm just like, no, ma'am. No. no. I'm no, I'm That's sorry. A lot of issues I, in the first I, season. There was a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was I, a lot. No, <laughs> it was a lot. No, I, I learned from I learned from Jen. I must be an independent woman, not Princess Shayla. Okay, <laughs> don't don't be a princess, Shayla. Like, please don't, because no. child, no, like nobody's trying. No. Oh, uh, no. and my thing is, I'm like, how did we leave? And that was like my biggest like mind jump because i'm like how did we leave from something like time force which was like had you know women empowerment like strong women strong characters like even though half the team didn't get shit to do but like mm. you know <laughs> it was still a solid season <laughs> I and mean, you get to wild force and it's like Ew. what were you gonna say <laughs> how i was gonna say like i mean in all fairness it's not like even if they did have stuff to do for example, like the Blue Ranger, um, it, w- it would not save his character, anyways. I'm, listen, I mean, I would have, I would have loved to have learned more <laughs> than just he's the pretty boy who always like do his hair in the mirror. Like, I would have loved to maybe learn a little more. How, that. Maybe that's how just how dense he is. That's all there is to him. I mean, I'm pretty sure he had. I mean, yes, we did learn that he was like a, you know, he was a, a drag racer. Like he used to, well, not no, he wasn't. He wasn't a drag racer. He arrested a drag racer. Um, oh. He was and, a legit sports car driver, right? Wasn't he? And a cop, and a cop, and a cop. How does yes. that work? I, I don't, I don't know. Like he, his story was weird. And then, <laughs> and then, like Katie, she had her own. The biggest one was Katie. I feel like Katie was the worst. Was the worst because of the fact that, like, we had that one episode with her. And her having like an identity crisis because she was missing her family and she got like all upset and she's like screaming, What is wrong with me? And, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and having like a complete meltdown, um, which was actually a great scene. Um, and that was it. That's all we got from her. And then we got that one episode with her when she was, when that, that guy was trying to like, you know, Matt unmasked them and he actually did but then he was like you know what to save my career oh, you know I'm not gonna wow. you know you know just be nice I'm not gonna you know air out the fact that you guys are time force rangers it's like bro I didn't no. even remember that one I, I thought you were gonna bring up the uh the one where she went back in time or was that a, a dream it was a dream I think it was I think she did actually go back in time maybe I, I don't know that episode was very confusing but- because I don't and know whether sto- she actually went back in time or what, whether it was a dream. I don't know. And the story wasn't even about her. It was a Katie Focus episode that wasn't about her. That was weird. Exactly. Exactly. That's why I actually tuned that episode out because, like, historically, <laughs> it does not make sense and she probably would have been killed. So, right. I'm like, historically, no. Like, this episode was terrible. But, like, but I don't know. Like, it was just so weird the way they did her. Like, Katie, uh And I feel like all of the actors in that season were were strong. Like when they were like together and were acting as a unit, I always felt like they were strong actors and actresses. And it's just like, they just, they got robbed. Like green, blue, and yellow just got robbed in Time Force. Like it, it was actually really sad. It was kind of sad when you think about it. It happened. It happens sometimes as, as we've seen quite a few times in this I mean, series. yeah 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 you're right i mean it, it does happen and, and i feel like that's kind of the reason why in a way it's like it's so hard to um get like certain toys you know and and, and to build mm. teams with toys because of the fact that you know the show only focuses on certain rangers most of the time like most of the time they only tell certain rangers story and you know if they're not popular or if they're not getting any shine or focus obviously that toy i don't think is going to sell like they're not going you know they're not going to no child is going to not go no child is going to want to buy something that's not being shown you know what i'm saying or not being pumped up you know it's not Mm -hmm. enough that oh they're a part of the team so therefore buy the toy like no that's not enough like give me a reason to buy it you know um and i just kind of feel like that's kind of the reason why a lot of times certain toys just don't get, you know, they don't sell well. 
you know, unfortunately, mm-hmm. because that ranger didn't really get anything to do. Um, mm-hmm. So, I mean, hopefully, hopefully, maybe. Um, speaking of, you know, Power Month, maybe they might, you know, give us more time for us, love, and, you know, maybe even perhaps give us a gin. Because, I mean, gin is an obvious shoe-in choice. Like, I mean, I really feel like gin should be, like, top on the list of, like, mm-hmm. getting a figure during Power Month. Um, I also feel like SPD Yellow should get, should oh, just go ahead geez. and finish up SPD. Give us SPD Yellow. Like, give us her. Um, and I don't know what other figures that I, I guess they would do, but those two are, like, the main ones. I'm like, they need to just go ahead and give, give them to us. You know, we've, they've been long overdue. Um, maybe even introduce a Morpha, like, like you said, the Turbo Morpher, an actual show replica of the Turbo Morpher, not the Car Ranger Japanese version, but the actual, like, TV show version. Give us that. Um, that would be cool. Hopefully they give us some, uh, news on the movie. Yes, 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 because that would be great if they actually did. <laughs> yeah, like, if we actually got something, like, but that you know what, That would make though? it really worth it, I think. God, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, for real. Like that would really, that would make it work. Like, like I said before, and I said this on the podcast before. Even if they just gave us like a lightning bolt and was like <laughs> coming soon, at least to let us know, hey, we ain't forgot about it, and we still working on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, give us something, mm-hmm. but don't just have us hanging in the balance and just being like, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, we 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 here, but you know, I guess it's a thing, but it just hasn't happened yet. But it's still a thing. Like, no, don't do that. Like, actually, you know, give us something. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. But you're right, though. You're right. Um, a, a little teaser, or or at least something about the movie would be great. Or hell, even the live action or the cartoon, which actually, mm-hmm. yes, that would be the perfect time to actually introduce something mm-hmm. about the cartoon. Yes. yes, 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 yes. Good job, Will. Yes. Um, <laughs> not good job, but you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> but but yeah, that'd be a good thing to actually introduce like the um the cartoon. That would be a perfect moment. And shoot, if they even have like some sketches or something, that'd be, be really cool too. Oh. Um, but yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. But okay, moving right along. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about Sailor Moon Eternal. We are going to be fighting evil by moonlight, winning love by daylight, and never running from a real fight because we are talking about Sailor Moon. Uh, <laughs> like how I did that, huh? Like how I did that. Yes, I did. I wish that they would get the rights to that song and use it. I really missed that song. And I missed the uh, the background music from that series. They have really good music all around for the, uh, the deep dub back in the day. Yo, the deep dub used to be the ish. I ain't gonna even hold you. Like, <laughs> like the deep dub was the shit. Like, and it, it's Canadian. It's from... You guys, it's you, isn't it? Isn't the deep dub is like Canadian? I believe, or is it Clove away? I be, yeah, I believe so. I believe that that is a uh, a Canadian country. A country. Oh my god, company. Excuse me. Yes. Well, I do know. I, <laughs> I do know. Majority of the voice actors on there are Canadian. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. I do know that. Like, all of the voice actors from the original 90s Sailor Moon dub is all Canadian. Mm-hmm. Um, even with, uh, even when they went to Cloverway, um, they were all the same actors and actresses, um, all playing yeah. the same characters, except yeah. for the difference of Sailor Moon and Sailor Mercury. They were all the same. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, but n- new voice actors this time around with Biz, which I think Viz, I think Viz is doing a pretty exceptional job. Like I really like the voice actors for Viz. Like overall, the, the voices and everything. How do you think? What do you think about them overall? Um, my favorite, my, my, real quick. My favorite is uh, is Jupiter. I I like that she still has her voice still fits her stature because she's mm-hmm. the big girl, the tomboy. And this you know she's a black still... woman, right? No, what? Mm-hmm. Jupiter's a black woman. Mm-hmm. 
I had no idea. Wow. Yep. But I, I I love that they were able to kind of keep that vibe just like they had with the 90 series. Um everybody mm-hmm. else um, is, is cool. Um it's 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 crazy how Johnny, you know, Johnny's like should be like mid 40s now and he sounds like a, a kid <laughs> when he plays Artemis. I wanted to say something about that. I dislike the fact that he barely got a speaking line in this movie part. Yeah. Of it. yeah, yeah, yeah. I I was like, like, was there even sense of watching it to review? Because I feel like he's not even in it. It was a very small portion. It was Ooh, cool yeah. when he got to do, but it would have been nice if we got to see them him in the command center with Luna and their daughter a little bit more. Um, oh, can I can I please say something? And I just totally mm-hmm. realized this as an adult. I have not watched Sailor Moon like since forever, and I used to love mm-hmm. it growing up. Loved it, like loved it. And but <laughs> I feel like there's a but coming. It's not so much of a but, but it's more like watching as an adult now, like watching to do the review for this episode. I realize the translation is so off; it's almost ridiculous. Yeah. Like when they yelled, uh, what, Moon Crescent Meditation or whatever it was, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, what do you mean? Right, Moon right. Up Meditation. I, again, I could be having my lines completely wrong, but all I remember no, you're was, right, you're right. was thinking, what the actual F is happening? Am I hearing this? That's just the name of the attack. <laughs> it's it's not just that. Um, there's a That's lot the of name. the attacks are are like that where it's, it's like exactly. the, like that word is kind of weird to use in this context. It's yeah, exactly. moon gorgeous meditation. That's just that's like, that's weird for something to be called that. Exactly, it is weird. Exactly right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm just like, oh, okay. And then the other thing that it dawned on me. And I realize how upset I am now that I realize this. They never actually fought. Like, they never physically fought anything. They just used their powers. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah. And I'm yeah, like, I noticed that, too. I noticed that, too. Right? And yeah. I, like, again, I, I might have not noticed as a child. Don't get me wrong. But as an adult watching it, like, you know, like, literally a couple hours ago or even last week, I remember thinking to myself, these girls used to be my heroes and what the frick did they do all it seems like <laughs> is literally what it is is how rangers meet witchcraft yeah. yeah 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 i was so disappointed when i realized the ultimate truth and then the other thing is too was that i was like so let me get the shit straight everyone that is serena whatever her name is i like was so usagi 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 Serenity, I don't even know how many names she's got at this point. <laughs> but the other thing I also realized was that Sailor Moon, you know, the main character, she is born into loyalty of some sort. And obviously Tuxedo Mask is like destined to love her. And mm. the two of them are obviously prince and princesses. And so it dawned on me that all her friends that are like, are so supposedly her friend, are actually really her minions. And- ah! <laughs> but yes. <laughs> so like, again, this is just me realizing this. Obviously, I'm just, I know for sure, Brandon, you already knows long time ago, but this is me watching as an adult and realizing how terrible I Sailor Moon is. And I don't think I'll ever rewatch this. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think I ruined it for myself. And well, I- let's get into it. Because I mean, like, to, to be honest, like when, when you actually think about it like that, it, it, it does feel weird. Um, and right. also to like the story itself, especially when you think about it, you know, now as in like current, yeah. it's, it's, it's terrible. Like it, it, it's, it's almost kind of like, it's almost kind of weird the way that they're That's set funny. up. But, uh, but and, and, and you have to almost kind of think about it in the sense of, this franchise is almost just as old as Power Rangers. So, you know, there's a lot of dated things, especially in that uh, 
in that culture, there's a lot of dated things mm-hmm. that right. Sailor Moon really still in capture. Um, right. Because if you really think about it, um, even though Sailor Moon is an all, you know, female team, and, you know, it is, you know, female empowerment and things of that nature, which it really does hold true. There's still some elements of, you know, of male patriarchy. Right. Where, you know, Tuxedo Mask uh, or, you know, Prince Endymion or Memor- oh, Mamoru or yeah, whatever you want to call whatever him. whatever all their names are. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you want to call him. Um, he still kind of, you know, jumps in as kind of like the male savior. Yeah. In a sense, where he's yeah. like always yeah. being like, hey, let me come and save you, even though you're m- way more stronger than me and you can handle yourself, but I'm going to mm-hmm. come and save you anyway. You know, right. like, there, and, there's um, still some level of that. Yeah. That's the other thing, which I thought is really creepy, and I know we're going to talk more into depth, but I just want to mention before I forget. Mm-hmm. And Helios, Helios kissing oh. little lady. Oh, yeah. What the hell was that? And yeah, that was, that was so weird. weird. And I was like... Uh, what am I so watching? I, yeah, I had to, a horse um, kissing a little girl. That's what you were yeah, watching. I, I had to. <laughs> I was not watching a horse. I, I was watching a grown man kissing a little girl. So I, I mean, it happened twice. Age. I had to look up his age because to, to make me feel better. Yeah. Apparently, he's around seventh grade age, so between twelve and thirteen. Even though he had that, that man voice, he was much bigger than her. But I was confused because I thought that Chibi Uso was like Orini or whatever you want to call her. I thought she was like um like seven. Right. That's no. like, like I I just think the whole thing it's really small. It's just really confusing and very like what the heck. Uh, and the other thing well, is, real quick, yeah. I'm so sorry, Will. I'll give you I'll give you the floor in a second. The other thing that really Okay, it's them sharing a bed together when they had that sleepover and they're mm-hmm. all sharing a bed and it dawned on me that Darian, whatever his name is, Tuxedo Mask, is in college. So he's like an mm-hmm. adult, like a legal adult. And he's mm-hmm. sharing a bed mm-hmm. with Serena or Serenity or Sailor Moon who's still a minor with a mm-hmm. tiny little girl who is <laughs> definitely a hardcore minor. And I remember thinking, this is so wrong on so many levels. I mean, I get that, like, in the end, they're actually a family and they do marry each other. That's their daughter. But that's not what it looks like when the police pop in. Like, what is happening? Yeah, the whole family (laughs) thing goes out the window when you realize that uh, little Chibi has a a, um, a crush crush on her father. Right. Yeah, that that, and that she, was always creepy. And then she admitted, I know he's gonna be my father someday. I, what the hell? And that, <laughs> ooh, that confused the crap on me. And I remember thinking, what the hell am I watching? <laughs> like, what is um, happening right now? Yeah. So, yeah. That's all I have to say before we get started because I wanted to say those things for so long and I had to get that off my chest. So I am done. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, I, like I said, it it is it, dated, and, and I mean, there's there's so many things that, and, and granted, you know, child child pedophilia has ne- has never been a thing. Like, it's not something to be okay with, you know. But it's just so weird that, like, and I always felt like that, you know, story between Chibi Yusa wanting to. Um, you know, having this big crush on her dad, like I always felt like that was weird. Like I, I, I don't know, like that just it just always kind of it really creeped me out, especially especially in the anime, like when they mm-hmm. would like in the nineties anime, like the way she would be sometimes like kind of like gooning over um over Tuxedo Mask. It's just kind of like, girl, chill out. Um, I'm, I'm, but, I mean, do you remember her debut when she fell out of the sky and landed on his lips? Right, right. Like, <laughs> and then she put she put a gun up the um poor little Sailor Moon. Pistol just like, whipped her. That was pistol crazy. whipped up. Like just, uh, 
And sidebar, I never liked that character. Like, I, I fucking hate Chibi Usa. <laughs> like, she was never my, one of my favorite characters. I always fucking hated her. Um, mm. It's just, uh, uh, and don't even get me started on, on Sailor Moon R. Don't, don't get me started. Like, that, that to me is one of the worst seasons of Sailor Moon. Like, I, it, by far, is one of the worst. Like, if it would have stopped at Alan and Anne, with the, with the two little aliens or whatever. Like, if it would have stopped there, I'd be happy. But the fact that they had to go into that arc with Chibi Yusa coming in, I'm just like, ugh, this show is terrible. But they, you know, they got better with Sailor Moon S. So I was like, good job. Um, but no, the movie itself, like, I, one thing that really did annoy me with the movie is, yes, there was not that much Artemis in there. Um... Artemis mainly popped around the story of um, Minako and the fact that Minako could not transform. So basically, the story goes, basically, each Sailor Guardian had issues with transforming. So basically, they had to rediscover, in a sense, in a way, rediscover who they are and, you know, find out what their dreams are. And, and that dream would re, would almost kind of give them, well, that, that dream or purpose would, you know, give them their sailor crystal, which gave them their ability to transform. Now, here is the thing that really bothered me about Minako's story, which was attached to Artemis, which is Johnny on, Bar, Johnny on Botch. The fact that Minako did not get her crystal from herself Artemis gave her her crystal. So I'm like, you mean to tell me Artemis was holding on to her Venus crystal the entire time and he didn't give it her knowing doggone well she can't transform? Well, that's why he got squished, remember? <laughs> well, he, de he deserved that. <laughs> he deserved that because I'm like, <laughs> That was a bruh. laugh, I'm sorry. <laughs> And I was actually like, my heart did stop when that that big ass rock just like boom, just I, yeah, that, just that, that part them. shocked. That part me actually too. shocked me. I did I not like, see no, it coming. Not <laughs> the cat, not the cat. I mean, I'm a cat person too, so I'm like, not the cat. Right. Yeah, then I saw. And I was, I was, yeah, I, I was, was thinking like, like, oh my god, Artemis is important. Yo, did you really just kill him? I was like, oh my god, there's blood. Did they just really murder a whole cat in front of me? I'm so done with Sailor Moon now. Like, I really was at that point. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what's happening. I just see some incest. I see a little girl falling in love with her father. I see a grown ass man kissing a little girl. Like, and these these morph calls are, are, are I don't know, I'm done. I'm, a, I'm out. <laughs> like, it's, that was tough. Like that, that scene, I was like, oh my God. Um, but I, the one that I really enjoyed though, like that, that part, I was just like, Artemis, you deserve to get squished because you had, you had her Venus crystal the entire time. Like, bruh, like, how dare you? Um, <laughs> but like, I really felt like Christina V as Sailor Mars. I enjoy her. I actually do enjoy her as Sailor Mars. Um, I like that look. Now I'm not gonna lie though. I think between her, when it comes to the inner guardians, between her and Mercury, I think they have the best attacks because that Mars flame sniper oh. is beautiful. Like it is so beautifully drawn. Yeah, I in general I love Mars attacks. I really miss the um, the, what was it the the mon burning mandala. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, she hasn't used that in a little while. Yeah, like in the um, well, in the in Crystal, they that was her like, um, that was her attack for mainly like season two. Um, mm -hmm. she did use it a little bit in season three, but season three was mainly Mars Snake Fire because she used that with Planet mm -hmm. Power. Yeah, but um, but yeah, like I I I really like Christina V. I I really like her as Sailor Mars. Um. I don't know, like, for me, overall, the story, and just to give you guys a recap of what the story is, because I know we just kind of just jump right into it. Um, so basically, the story is about, it, it leaves off on Crystal Season 3, where um, basically they just got finished fighting 
um, the Death Busters and everything is, you know, back to normal. And basically, Chibi Yusa is about to go home. And as she's about to go home, they she hears a little bell. And the bell actually turns out to be Helios, which is the ho- the grown ass man that Le- Lena is talking about. <laughs> the <laughs> unicorn a man. Yes, he is a unicorn, not a Pegasus. For for the people in the back, please get this right. He is not a Pegasus. He is a unicorn. <laughs> Pegasus is a is the winged horse, right? Is a winged horse. Yes, they do not oh, have horns. Sense. But this for was... some reason, Japan just feels like Pegasus <laughs> are horned winged creatures. And they're like, no, that's wrong. So this was really cool for me because I had, um, by the time they aired that over here back in the day on the original anime, I stopped watching. I just would see it mm-hmm. in the um, on the Toonami commercials because I was watching mm-hmm. something else on Toonami. So like, it was really cool to finally see what that was and soon i'm going to see what it, uh what it was on the original anime when i when i watch it on hulu i can't wait to watch season four i mean season four i'm gonna be honest with you season four is also not one of my favorites but i mean hey you might enjoy I'm it I didn't. Before. I'm not, maybe. yeah you might enjoy it you might enjoy it i mean it is a prim- it is primarily a chibi use of season and of course, as you know, I hate Chibi Yusa, so I did not <laughs> like it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so you know, the horse comes and basically, you know, tells him that he needs help. Um, also, as this is happening, there is a um, there is a solar eclipse where, and then the bad guys are coming through the solar eclipse, and basically, they are coming to wreak havoc. And they are of a circus; they are the Dead Moon Circus. And they are, they have um, Zirconia as the ringleader. <laughs> and you have the Amazonist Quartet, which are these little girls, you know, who oddly enough, they, I think they're little girls, but they also might be little people because they are very, they, they are very robust. So I'm like, I can't really tell right. if they're kids. <laughs> Or I, if they're like little people, I, I can't tell, but I it's weird. I they were like teenagers. I, I don't know. They, well, they're, they're short for teenagers. Like they look like they're like Chibi Yusa size. You thought they were? Or at school? least Sailor Saturn. Or at least Saturn size. Damn. And Saturn is like a preteen. Right. So I'm like. I, wow, I don't even notice them being that short. Yeah, like they're short. So I'm just like. Mm, I don't know about this, but um, <laughs> more they, weird Japanese, uh, I guess, culture in their anime. Yeah, which I'm also kind of like. Sometimes Japanese Japanese anime can be a little suspect when you start really getting into it because it's like, well, uh, you guys are kind of, you know, <laughs> you know, this is getting kind of weird now. Getting kind of weird. <laughs> um but <laughs> but um but yeah so they basically you know and the the three people now i thought that it was really funny how they created tiger's eye fish eye and hawkeye now of mm. course in the american version fish eye was a female and obviously in the japanese version fish eye is a man so fish eye is this very just androgynous just she is given. She is given life, honey. I love Fish Eye. Between <laughs> Fish Eye and Hawkeye, especially Hawkeye. First of all, Hawkeye is a whole man in a dress. I said yes, honey. Give it to me. Did you see that dress Hawkeye had on? <laughs> First of all, Hawkeye had on a whole dress, stockings, and heels, <laughs> and is just prancing around that store <laughs> like baby. <laughs> I said, Hawkeye, baby, get into it. Get into it, honey. I was gagging for Hawkeye, honey. I was gagging. And I actually felt bad. Did you guys feel bad for when Hawkeye um, got killed? Because I felt bad. Because like, it was just the way, like, after it's, Jupiter killed him, he was just like, well, I hope you find your dream. Yes. Hmm? I'm not going to um, lie. I felt like he was probably one of the most, like, truest villain there was. Yeah. You know, like, I felt like he did what he had to do, 
but he, I don't think he wanted to do that. Does that make sense? Right. Like, like, you know, like I did really feel bad for him though, because I felt like he was genuinely there trying to help her. But mm-hmm. unfortunately, he was also tied to what he had to do. Right. That that's what I felt too. That's what I felt too. And I felt really bad for him because I'm like, he actually was really helping her because he like really did help her like figure out like you know what she wanted to do but at the same time it was you know he was really like the goal was actually to help her to you know figure out her dreams so that they could like you know steal the energy obviously and you know do bad things but like he really was genuinely concerned about her getting to her dream which I was just like Oh, that's that really sucks. Like he just dies like right after he tells her, like you know, I hope you find your, I hope you are successful in your in your business and you know whatever. And he, then he dies. I'm like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. But yeah, it was like so those, dramatic too. <laughs> it was dramatic, but I'm not even gonna hold you though. When she started doing her attack, like it was the fact that like the Amazon this quartet jumped out of the way and he's just standing there like, oh my. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, if you don't run and he's just standing there like, oh, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Like, it was, oh my God. Like that part actually cracked me up. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah. Uh, and okay. So that's pretty much the first half. Like, cause there's, because the movie is actually two parts. So it basically ends with, you know, the girls getting, after Venus gets her powers, and, you know, she gets her powers and then they fight the Amazonist Quartet, which the Amazonist Quartet ends up trapping them with some kind of big ass plants. So, and they were about to kill them. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, it goes to the second one where my girls come in. Because I, I love the Outers. I, I am a huge fan of the Outer Sailor Guardians. Like, ugh, I love them. I effing love them. Um, Neptune. I always said Neptune is my is my spirit animal because I always I, I I don't know. I just feel like Neptune is more of me because she's so like she's so elegant and mature, but yet she'll still whoop your ass. But she's so like, <laughs> but she's so like demure and just so like prim and proper. I just I just love Neptune. But anyway, um. And then, of course, they're, you know, sharing the whole, they're, like, basically raising Hotaru at this point. And she's growing at this, like, exponential rate. Um, And so they basically, Saturn basically tells them, you know, the prince and the princess are in trouble. And she gives them their sailor crystals, basically being like, you know, you guard, we guardians are renewed. We have a new purpose. And because we have a new purpose, here are our crystals. And they go run to save the others. And they join the team as, you know, now full members of the Sailor Guardians. So I have a question for you guys, right? Overall, with the movie, right? What part, what movie did you like? Did you like the first movie or did you like the second? Definitely the second because there was less of that weird, creepy stuff that was happening. Yeah, I was gonna. I agree. <laughs> I like the second, uh, the second part. Like it actually stuck to the the real storyline. And don't get me wrong, the the style of it, like the whole, you know, like I like how they were taking time to focus on everybody to give everybody a bit of a backstory so that if you didn't watch Sailor Moon, mm-hmm. you, mm-hmm. you yeah, you, you learned the characters. And I actually remember it was a great refresher for me, you know? So I, I genuinely loved how they told the story, but I also did feel like the story dragged. I felt like it could have been- Yes, faster, yes. You know? And it didn't need mm-hmm. to be a two-parter. That was for sure. Um, but yeah, but of the two, definitely the second one. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, and Will, you you sound like you were in agreement. What do you think? It's basically the same? Basically the same. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I like the the emphasis on the Outer Guardians because I, um, you know, like this is the first time that I've really gotten to uh, get to know them 
um, between mm. some Crystal watching the old anime recently as well. So th- having them focused on more was really cool. That was that was really interesting. They were raising, they basically had a life together. Um, Uranus and uh, Neptune raising Saturn and Pluto, and then, and Pl- and then Pluto. Pluto was just kind of there. But whatever. I guess she was. She was kind of. Um, I guess she's old. Is she older than them? I guess she maybe was a guard. Yeah, she's older. Yeah, she's she's a little older. Like Pluto. I mean, Pluto is pretty much like Mamoru's age. Mm. Um. So she's like. Right. So she's like eighteen. Level. Yeah. Yeah. Pluto is like eighteen, nineteen. Yeah. I'm thinking she's like way older than that. Mm-mm. No, she's like eighteen or nineteen. Um, because she was okay. in. She was in college. She was in college. Uh, I th- I thought she had a job at the college. She was actually a student. Nope. She's in college. Okay. All right. Well. Um. Yeah. Uh, some interesting was they all had the I guess the older outer guardians. They ha- all had rings to symbolize their commitment to raising Hotaro, which was that was interesting. Um. Something uh, we got to see uh, Artemis's human form again, and when I saw him the second time, I instantly thought that he looked like uh, Lucius Malfoy from from Harry Potter. Wow! Wow! <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah the the light uh, the white hair, even though Lucius was blonde, but. And um, being tall, it just, I, I instantly got that. Wow. <laughs> but I had, um, it was really cool to see the uh, the full team, like the complete team. Mm-hmm. Um, the In the last battle, that was like, wow, that was really cool to see them all um, get power-ups and then to get uh, Eternal Sailor Moon. I had never seen that before. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. So that was, yeah, it, 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 I like the finality of that. Because I felt the first part, it was, it was something that I noticed watching Sailor Moon back, um, the original anime, and also watching Crystal. Um, it's fun, it's nostalgic, and there are some legitimately good moments, but there's also filler, there's weird translations with, you know, adapting it over to, you know, American culture. Um, and sometimes, like, the dialogue is just crazy, other than the, um, other than the attacks, um, which I guess they talk about beauty with the attacks, because, you know, the... Yeah, pretty guardian Sailor Moon. I guess that's why they they talk about that. And then when they transform, you know, at the end they say makeup. So I guess that's the emphasis on the beauty part, which is still kind of weird. Um, no. Some of the dialogue was just strange, and I don't know if you guys saw this, but if you put the subtitles on, or not the subtitles, the uh, captions on for the um, the English dub, it doesn't match it's like they Hmm. yeah it's like they use the subtitles from the original yeah um, the japanese version Mm -hmm. and you know you kind of yeah you kind of get like a roundabout way of what that would mean if it was in english compared to how it's said in english it's a little bit different and i was like what interesting it was totally that threw me off but i felt like the the captions were actually better than the 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 dub that they gave us. The way that because um, mm. it, it, I thought it like it better explained certain things. Interesting. But, um, anything else? Anything else? Anything else? Um, I, I like like we said before. I definitely wish that Johnny Artemis had um, some more to do. There was um, it was a really funny part. Um, there was a part where, well, oh God, actually it was another weird part. When um, when Chibi Usa and uh, Usagi, they both had made wishes that they could look different. Um, Chibi oh, Usa yeah. wanted to be a big girl and then uh, Usagi wanted to be a little 
a little girl. And then yeah. uh, something happened in battle where they, they basically switched. And it was so weird to see Chibi Usa in her regular, uh, I guess her regular uniform. Why are they wearing school uniform in the summer? Is it the summer? Uh, it might not be the summer. Well, no, but, uh, um, they were supposed to be in school at that point. All right. They were in school. All right. That was really weird because it was so small. <laughs> like it, her skirt looked like a belt. <laughs> that was weird. And then later on, uh, something similar happened between Mamoru and um, and uh, Usagi, where they turn they both turned into kids, and they were in complete bliss. And there was a, a moment where uh, they were walking to school together, holding hands, and Mamoru was talking about how he wanted to do basically everything for her, make all of her dreams come true. And then the uh, this was another situation where the dub, or excuse me, the captions were better than what they were actually saying in the dub. Because Usagi was hmm. like, has Mamoru always been this soft? And I was like, what? <laughs> she didn't, oh my God. That was, wow. She said that. that was, but they didn't have it in the dub. That was so much better than what she said. Wow. <laughs> so on I'll the actual... The so in the like, so when she's saying it, like mm-hmm. she's saying, she, was he she always? Said, she said something along the lines of, um, "Mamaru's never like this. He's always, um, he always wants me to do things for myself." But then, like the, I guess what she said in the Japanese version was, "Has Mamaru ever always been this soft? He's usually so strict and stern." Wow. Interesting. Huh. <laughs> that is interesting. Wow. Okay, I may have to watch this with the dub. Cause it, well, not the dub, but like with the closed oh, captioning. The, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was, there was some very interesting thing that was said, and I remember thinking <laughs> like, um, oh, okay. Like, I'm not sure if I remember seeing this or if I'm remembering this wrong, but they were making, like, some kind of sexual reference, mm-hmm. and it popped up as something completely different. <laughs> wow. And I remember thinking, um, well, I'm glad they say that one out loud. Woo! <laughs> oh, God. And another thing, um, did, you, did you guys notice um, the parallels of, uh, what was her name, Queen... Nehalenia. Nehalenia. Between her and Maleficent. Yes, yes. Their stories that are was, very similar. Yeah. That they was, are that, very that, similar. That was uh that got a, a chuckle on me. Yeah, I mean, like to be honest, like when there's one thing that she does actually say that is actually a huge clue. Of the um of the final the final arc, which is uh stars, um, mm-hmm. which is the one like right after this one. The, she said something that is very interesting. She says that basically we all come from the same place. And in actuality, they do. Like they all really actually do come from the same place, which is called the cauldron. Um, and they actually go into detail about that in Sailor Stars in the mm-hmm. in the manga. Um, it's, it's, a, it's actually a very interesting story. And um, and and just to let you know, in Sailor Stars, they do, they do die again. Um, <laughs> they I die remember, like yeah. I actually and, remember uh, reading something about that. Yeah, <laughs> like they end up getting killed, and then um. Sailor Galaxia ends up reanimating them, but turns them evil. And then Sailor Moon has to fight her friends all over and have to literally fight her friends. So, like, they're literally shooting her with their attacks. And she has to, like, basically fight them. So it's very interesting. I'm actually very interested to see how they're going to animate that because that's actually going to be, like, if they animate that and actually have her, like, physically like running around trying to dodge their attacks and then like literally like shooting at her that would actually be kind of cool to see mm-hmm. but um but yeah like Sailor Moon is yeah she actually ends up fighting her friends in the end 
um, and killing them. So yeah. Mm. Um, so it's it's actually a very, very, very interesting story. And plus, um, remember when Chibi Yusa was like, you know, hopefully she becomes a true guardian. And and when she met um uh when she was in, introduced to um the uh sailor asteroids, whatever you want to call them, the sailor quartet, yeah. whatever you want to call them. Yeah. When they, when, yeah. It Those was are her the, actual uh, guardians. Right. It was the girls, uh, the, the quartet. Uh, mm-hmm. There was a scene where, uh, oh my goodness, I think Sailor Saturn was trying to tell them, like, you're being manipulated right now. You, you guys aren't actually evil. Um, yeah. And they get, they get murked. Oh, by by the, oh, what was the, the witch? Um, Zirconia. Zirconia. She, she was cracking me up. But um yeah, she marked them and then later at the end we found out uh that yeah, they are sailor guardians. They uh don't have planets, they have the asteroids. Asteroids. Mm-hmm. And um they yes, they'll be the guardians of uh Chibiusa, just like uh Mars, Venus, Jupiter, and Mercury are. So yep. that that made me really that is interesting because I, I did I I didn't know that, um, and I think that that would be that could be a sequel series. That'd be interesting, and and that'd yeah. be a, that's a cool way to do something else with the Seven Home property. I've always said that. Like I always felt like that would have been very interesting to actually show um, Chibi Yusa as like a you know like actually show a story about her where it's like okay she's now like Sailor Moon. You know, like she is now Sailor Moon. So, what is, you know, what is her life like as a Sailor Guardian? You know, yeah. and she has her team, you know, of asteroid sailors. <laughs> you, <laughs> you know, you like, know what, they, what is it going to be about? <laughs> you know, something else um, that I thought would have been interesting or could still be interesting is if they ever did something with Sailor Venus's backstory um when she was sailor v because she had a whole yes crime fighting career before she joined the guardians with i would love to see that interesting yes and i didn't and i had no idea that she was the leader of the team i always thought Mm -hmm. that um sailor moon was i had no idea that sailor venus was a leader when she said i'm a horrible leader i'm like who were you a leader i didn't know that yeah, Sailor Venus is technically the leader of the Guardians. Um, well, the Inner Guardians. She is the leader. Um, is which, that exclusively for the for the manga, or was it always established in the anime as well? Um, it's weird with the anime because in the anime she does sort of kind of act as like full leader. Um, mm-hmm. but it's is like when when Sailor Moon had the um the Moon Stick. Um, in the original season, in the original series, she was proclaimed technically as the leader when she had the moonstick. Um, but that was before she found out she was the princess. And that was before mm-hmm. Venus came along. So um, I, it's, it's weird because I, I, I honestly do feel like Venus was still sort of the, like the leader mm-hmm. in the anime too, but they never really focused on that because like when venus was reborn she just became miss promiscuous and was just always thinking about dudes all the time and that was pretty much it with her um you know but when she first joined um the sailor guardians she was like strictly business during the original and like during the first season like she was strictly business. Like it was just basically I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. like, all right, kill these motherfuckers and like let and let's go home. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> that was that was her MO. And then like after she got reborn, then it was like, oh my God, boys. So, you know, it was it's it's weird. Like Venus in the anime, I felt like really did not I, I felt like they really did a number on her. Like I felt like it was kind of disrespectful. What they did to Venus. She became because, like a Usagi. She was yeah. just like her. She was even she be- bad in school. Yeah, and I mean, like that was kind of her mo in a sense in in, say, in the original Sailor V manga. That was kind of her mo. She was pretty much like a Usagi too. 
But because mm-hmm. like basically, technically, Venus is first. Like Venus is before right. Sailor Moon. So right. like technically, she was the ditzy, clumsy, you know, idiot. She, but, and, and if I if I remember correctly, like that was originally what Sailor Moon was going to be, and then they made the decision to expand it to what it became. Right, 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 right. Because Sailor Venus was so popular, like, oh, well, you know, expand it, and then that's when they were like, how that's when they made the decision hell? to make Sailor Moon. And how the hell haven't they done something with Sailor, like solely with Sailor Venus? That's, that's crazy. That is weird. That is weird. I would have, I would have loved to have seen a Sailor V anime by now. Like. Oh, uh, like Sailor V is, and then like, if, have you read the anime book? Not anime. Have you read the manga before? I ha- skimmed through it, so I haven't really. Okay, so that's not fair to say. Okay, yeah, no, I I read bit. I read a, a pretty much almost all of it, with the exception of like how it ended. I have no idea how it ends, um, because I just it was hard to actually find that manga <laughs> mm-hmm. at the bookstore that I was going to. Like they never had that that issue in. Um, but, um, from what I read all the way up to almost like the ending, the ending of it, like the story itself is actually really good. Like it's a really good story. So Mm -hmm. I'm like, and she had her own feelings and like, she, you know, it was, it was very interesting. Like, it was like, Mm -hmm. she was battling like basically kind of like a tv station type type of thing like they were all like trying to be like idols so they were all it was kind of like a um like a a, a a a casting agency or something like that like it was like a, um, a talent there we go talent agency she was fighting against an evil talent agency so like i think that is kind of like a really funny story you know and plus say V always wanted to be an idol so and that was say Venus's thing so I think it's really cool. I I think that they should definitely probably after they finish the crystal, maybe they should they should go into trying to do something with Sailor V. I think they should. Um, but yeah, like that was that was something I always thought they should have done. Um, but yeah, like overall thoughts. Like, so let's go ahead and grade this bad boy. I will give it as far as story. Um, now if we're doing separate. I would probably say the first one gets a three and the second half gets a four in terms of obviously like if we're talking about like um, Sailor Mars, Sailor Mars, I, I just love, like I said, I love Christina V as Sailor Mars. So I will give her a five. Just love her. Um, unfortunately, Johnny was not in it enough. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but what Johnny did do though, I love Johnny's voice, um, but he just wasn't in it. Um, so I would probably give him, I will probably give him a three. Um, because just because he's good though. I really like, I really like I think him. You got, yeah, I think you pretty much covered him. We did the overall show, the movie, yes. and then each one of them individually. Yes. Yeah. Okay. See, so yeah, I did it right. All right. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So um, you guys go. I think for me, the first one would definitely be a two, the first half of the movie. The second okay. half of the movie would be a four. Christina obviously loved her five. And Johnny? Yeah, a three and a half, only because he got squish. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> he, he did deserve it, but that's not the point. First half? Uh... <sighs> Uh, I'm. Uh, do I want to be harsh and give it a two, or do I want to be lenient and give them a three? Uh, because there were there were parts that I enjoyed, but there was like a lot of fluff in there too. Um, screw it, I'm gonna give it a two. <laughs> um, uh, part two. Part two, I want to give it a three because I felt like it was decent. I feel like four, four is a little bit too high for me. Um, I, I but I enjoyed it a lot more. 
Um, I just feel like I, I wish that um, I wish it was a little bit tighter with the story and with mm. the direction that they're that they're trying to portray. Um, it, it, a lot of times it just feels like so all over the place and the tone, the dialogue, it, it can get lost a lot, a lot for me. Um, That's real. For, yeah, for Johnny, um, oh man, I was really, I was really excited to, to uh, hear Artemis some more, but he didn't really do much. Um, so I'm going to have to give him, since he didn't do much, I would have to give him a two, unfortunately. And then uh christine christina was uh was mars right mm-hmm. yeah i feel like we, yeah we saw a fair amount of of her in here so i would give her like a like a three um she didn't i guess besides the uh you know the solo um you know it was the i think the biggest the biggest dream or the biggest wish or something like that for them I guess besides that, she uh, that was like the biggest thing that she got. So, and then she was just she was definitely there and around. So yeah, I'll give her a three. Okay, that's real. I mean, like, I well, here's my thing about like the other separate girls. Like, I always like for me, especially with like the other Sailor Guardians that wasn't Sailor Moon on the first on the first part. Like I like like we said earlier, I definitely did enjoy the fact that they did get their own solo thing, where it was just kind of like you got to learn a little more about each girl. Um, and I, I don't know, like I really felt like, especially with um, with Mars, I felt like her story was like I really appreciated it, especially for the fact that like it, it did kind of crack me up when she was in the mirror realm, when she was in the mirrors. And then, like, <laughs> the her, her little small stuff was, like, all up on, um, all up on Tiger's Eye. I thought that that was so funny. Because I'm just like, okay, this is actually funny, but it was actually really creepy. Because it's like, you have this little girl, <laughs> this little girl, like, caressing this grown-ass man. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, Japan, you, you guys are just so creepy. <laughs> Mm. oh you guys are creepy but um but yeah I, yeah overall yeah I, I i i can see where you're coming from will i see it um but yeah so you know um if you guys have seen the movie um check it out let us know what you think um you know primarily you know normally you know i mean no one's even scratch that go Watch the movie. Watch the movie for yourself. Watch the movie for yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, especially if you like, even if you do like Sailor Moon, um, watch it for yourself. I know a lot of people on YouTube were complaining about the attacks and and stuff like that. I personally loved them, like especially the um, the revamped ones of like the um, of the Inner Guardians. A lot of people were complaining about those, mainly about. Um, Venus. Like, I saw a lot of people really just upset about Venus. And I like Venus's attack. Why? What was wrong with her attack? Well, originally in the anim- in the 90s anime, well, first of all, people were complaining because um, the, uh, the crystal, the, well, not crystal, but eternal, basically just redrew the 90s anime versions of those attacks, but just kind of mm-hmm. made them different. Um, but they did the same physical mannerisms, pretty much, ex- with the exception of Mercury and Mars. Venus, her mannerisms are literally the same um, as the 90s one. But the 90s one, and this is what really pisses me off about just fans in general. It's like, if you're going to complain about something, complain about something and be right. Don't put, complain about it and be wrong. Um, people <laughs> really don't realize that Love and Beauty Shock is not... An energy attack. Love and Beauty Shop is it, sh- shock is a whip. It, she's using the love whip, which is made of flowers. And so this attack is technically very accurate. Like it is the most is the more accurate attack than Love and Beauty Shock in the '90s anime because the '90s anime 
basically technically is actually um rolling heart vibration which is an attack that she should have had way back in sailor moon r so like she technically should have already had that but they never actually gave her anything else so what they did was they just went ahead and used love and beauty shock as a you know they made that as her replacement attack for rolling heart vibration um and so the movie version took her physical mannerisms for love and beauty shock in the in the 90s anime and just went ahead and made her do the kiss and throw the heart but then right after that that follows it is the the love whip which i thought was actually really cool because i'm like the heart is kind of like a diversion and then all of a sudden you just have like a freaking whip flying at you. Like, I actually think that's pretty freaking dope. But of course, mm-hmm. like, you know, fans, it's like, well, well, why does she have that? Why does she even blow a kiss to begin with? What are they doing? It's just like, oh, guys. Do you? And then like some people were even like, well, I like the 90s version better because she threw like a ball of energy. And it's like, but it's still inaccurate. Like that's not what the attack is, and their fall in the manga is basically following. Well, Eternal is following the manga, so it's like obviously she's going to throw, she's going to throw a whip instead of a ball of energy because they're following the manga. But you know, when you when you start dealing with fandoms, you know it starts getting weird. So it's just like uh, whatever. Um, but yeah, so um, yeah, if you haven't seen it please go watch it. If, if you want to actually watch it, please go watch it if you haven't seen it yet. And um, yeah, well, if that, well, in that case, my name is Brandon. I am Lena. And I'm Will. And we will see you next time. Bye! Bye! Bye.